This tutorial is an introduction to hydrological modeling and simulation in GRASS-GIS. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to compute flow accumulation and simulate shallow overland flows of water and then animate them using the GRASS-GIS animation tool. GRASS-GIS has many tools for hydrologic modeling, analysis, and simulation. These include R.Watershed for watershed analysis and flow accumulation, R.Lake and R.Lake series for flooding, R.Sim Water and R.Sim Sediment for simulating shallow overland flows, the R.Stream family for analyzing stream networks and many other modules and add-ons. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Governor's Island dataset for GRASS-GIS. Please download, extract, and move this dataset to your GRASS data directory. You can find the data set in the About section of this video and on my website. The tutorial here is part of the course, GIS for Designers. You can find a link to the instructions for the tutorial in the About section of the video as well. To begin with, start a new session of GRASS and Select your GRASS data directory here. Find the Governor's Island location and then start a new map set called Hydrology. Start that here and then in GRASS In your new session, go ahead and add a raster map layer. You can use the add raster button right here. And we're going to pick from the permanent map set, we're going to pick elevation 2017. The permanent map set contains an elevation, a digital elevation model called elevation 2017. That's from a LIDAR. A Airborne LiDAR mission over New York City, capturing the topography. There's also a time series of imagery from 2012 until 2018 with four channels, red, green, blue, near infrared. We're going to be working with the orthopho this orthophotography, this imagery today as well. Take the map elevation 2017 and go ahead and add that. So here's the governor's island elevation. We're going to work on just a small study area for this. Um, so zoom in. I'm going to zoom in on this area with the landforms in the southwest. I'll dra draw a window covering the area I want like so. Now, to focus more on the landforms, I'm going to resize this window. And zoom in again. Now, this is the study area I want. So I'm going to set the region from my display. It's going to set the extent of all raster computations to just this part of the map, to just this extent. So set computational region extent. 
from display. This is using the command g.region. And if we want to save the bounds of this region, we can, now that we've set the region, we can save this region to a named region here. Save computational region to named region. And we could save this, for example, as landforms. If you wanted, if you'd zoomed away and you, or set another region you want to return to this, you can just set the region again now by going g. Dot, now that you've saved it, you can go g. Dot region, region equals landforms, and it'll set, set it back to this area. Our first steps now may be to add a mask. We're going to use a vector mask. Um, a mask of the vector map shoreline. So this is the shoreline. The white is um, off, outside of the island. Gray is inside of the island. So we'll use this map as our mask. I'll use the command r.mask. We can find this under raster r.mask in the modules tab. Here we can set the mask the vector map and pick shoreline from permanent shoreline and you can run this to set the mask we've set our region we set a mask and now we're ready to do some analysis first of all let's compute shaded relief so we can better visualize the terrain before we get started with a hydrologic analysis Under terrain analysis, you'll see the command r.relief, compute shaded relief. This is modules, raster, terrain analysis, compute shaded relief, r.relief. I'm going to put the map elevation 2017 in here. For the output, I'll call this relief 27. I'll just call this relief. And in the optional tab, we should set the elevation units here to US survey feet. Go ahead and run this. I'll set overwrite because I've already run it before. Now it looks a little flat, so we can use a scale factor. So Z scale factor for exaggeration, set that to two. Well, relief will pop out a bit more. Now, as we look at this, we can see that there are some artifacts in the LIDAR. You can see that there are parallel lines running roughly on a diagonal here. This is an artifact, it's not a real part of the terrain, and it's going to affect our hydrologic simulation. The water will start flowing down these furrows. So to remove these, we can smooth the elevation map a bit. This will renew, remove a little bit of the noise from the roughness of the terrain as well. So to smooth this, we're going to use the command r.neighbors. This is in raster, neighborhood analysis, r.neighbors. So moving window analysis, and based on a moving window size, we're going to perform an operation. So our input map will be elevation 2017, and our output map, we'll, we'll just call it elevation. Elevation 2017 is in our permanent map set. In our current map set, we're going to write a new map called Elevation. You could also call this Smoothed Elevation, for example, if you want to. The neighborhood, I'm going to use a circular neighborhood to smooth this a bit better. And the operation we're going to run on each cell will be the average. 
We'll set a neighborhood size, and I'm going to set it to, it needs to be an odd number, and I'm going to set it to 5. 3 won't do it very much smoothing. 5 will do a bit more, but it, it still, it won't be too much. It'll be just noticeable. So this will smooth by moving a circular window from cell to cell and looking at the neighbors, um, five pixel neighborhood around it, and taking the average of that neighborhood for the cell. This will start to smooth the, uh, the terrain. So you can go ahead and run this. I'm going to um, set over, allow overwrite. And here's our smoothed elevation start to see the impact this had, we can run the um, shaded relief again. So r.relief. This time our input will be the map called elevation. That's the smoothed elevation I just created with r.relief. Our output, I'll call this relief. I'll use the same setting. So allow overwrite, a Z factor of two, and units in survey feed. And you can see it's smooth. I can still notice some of the artifacts of these diagonal lines, but they are blended a little bit into the terrain. We can still see that we've preserved a lot of the detail. So we haven't smoothed it too aggressively. Just enough to uh, help the water flow smoothly. We want to try to visualize the terrain a little bit better. We can use the add-on r.skyview to compute the skyview factor. This is a nice way to visualize terrain based on diffuse illumination. So this shaded relief map is direct illumination. It's based off of a given sun position. So I use the default, an altitude of 30, an azimuth of 270. So we have direct illumination from a sun. With r.skyview, we're going to get a diffuse illumination across the landscape. This is an add-on, so we need to install it. We can go to Settings, Add-on Extensions, G.Extension. In the Raster Tools, you'll find r.skyview and you can install this. Once you've installed it, I'll run r.skyview. Our input is going to be the raster map elevation. This is the smooth elevation I made with r.neighbors. Our output map, we can call this skyview. You'll set a number of directions, so it's going to compute this sky view based on um, the openness of terrain from 16 directions, and that's enough. You can run this. It may take a while, so I'm going to show you the results already. Here's the sky view factor. Comparing this with the relief, and you can see that the shadings on different parts of the features, and we're, we're highlighting different aspects of the landscape. This, for example, picks up very well the retaining walls at the corner of the landforms here, 
and it it highlights pretty well the uh, the ridge line as well. It's also putting a lot of shadow in this tight narrow area on the paths between on the path between these two landforms that are close and have very steep slopes. So we're getting a pretty different relief between these two. And we can actually create a composite of the direct and diffuse illumination using r.shade. With r.shade, we may first run r.shade. Um, and this will drape a raster over a relief map. So we may drape the um, over the relief map, we may drape the elevation map, and I might just call this something like shaded relief. What that will give us is colorized version of the shaded of the relief map, colorized with the, um, the elevation. Now, after we've run that, we can also run r.shade again, and this time we'll put the, um, the color map as the shaded relief we just made, and the shading map will be the sky view. And the name of the shaded raster map could be, for example, composite relief. And you probably, in, whenever you run r.shade, after you've run it, you probably want to set overwrite and then add a, a percentage to brighten based on the result. This will give us something like composite relief map. So once you have visualized your terrain appropriately, we're ready to move on. Let's start by computing flow accumulation over this landscape. We're going to use r.watershed to compute the flow accumulation, and then r.shade to drape the flow accumulation over the relief or sky view map. So we'll go to modules. We're going to look in the hydrologic modeling set. Here you'll find watershed analysis. Watershed analysis can compute flow accumulation, the number of cells draining through an elevation raster. So we'll put in our elevation raster as the input. This is the one we made with r.neighbors. And then in the outputs tab, we're going to make a flow accumulation raster. We can call this flow accumulation or perhaps just accumulation. In the optional tab, you may want to set um, use positive flow accumulation and beautify flat areas. You can go ahead and run this, and it should compute quickly for in this case. And I'll go ahead and add the results here. This is starting to show us the accumulation of water across the landscape. We can add a legend for this with d.legend or by going here to add raster legend. We'll put the name of the raster map in, optionally set some fonts using a free open source font I downloaded called Leto. 
and we may optionally set a position. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to move the position to the parameters are bottom, top, left, and right. So I'm going to set the bottom to probably about 75% of the screen, top to maybe 98, the left to maybe 2, and the right to 3.5 or 4. Apply. Now you can see that it's only showing black because most of the values are so high. So we're going to use the logarithmic scale here in the advanced tab and apply. Now we can see our legend. If I want to make this thinner, I might change this to 3 or 3.5 for the, the right parameter. So this is our flow accumulation. These units are in the number of cells and these are one foot cells, that um, number of cells draining into um, a given cell of the raster. So this is where water is likely to flow and start to accumulate. Now, if we want to visualize just the concentrated flow, we can double click on here and pull up d.rast for the accumulation, for the flow accumulation map, and go to the selection tab. In the selection tab, I'll put a range of values, for example, 100 to a large number larger than our maximum, which is somewhere around, uh, somewhere over 200. Uh, 40,000. There, we've extracted all the cells that have at least 100 cells of water accumulating in them. Now, let's go ahead and compute shallow water flow. This is a simulation of shallow overland flows of water. And the algorithm is called SIMWI, simulated water er erosion. And it's implemented as the module r.sim.water. So we'll go to modules. Hydrologic modeling, r.sim.water. Our input is going to be our elevation map, and we're using the smoothed elevation map we made with r.neighbors. We need to now input the partial derivatives of the elevation map, dx and dy. This is essentially the slope in the x direction and the slope in the y direction. We can compute this with r.slope.aspect. You could also compute it with r.param scale. I'm going to look in terrain analysis. And I'm going to, you could use r.param scale. I'm going to use um, r.slope.aspect. And the input will be elevation. The output, I'm going to use dx and dy. These are the partial derivatives of the elevation raster. Then run that. This will create dx and dy. There's our elevation raster that these are from. 
So we're going to, in r.sim.water, we've input the elevation map. We're going to input dx and dy, our partial derivatives. These are required input. In the input tab, we're going to add a few parameters here as well. So we're going to set a constant rainfall rate. Um, and this is in millimeters per hour. I'm going to set this to 150 millimeters per hour. And we're going to use a constant value for our Manning's roughness, our Manning's surface roughness factor, our in value. And I'll explain what this is later. And we will try a spatially variable Manning's value next. For our output, we're going to create a water depth raster. You can call this water depth or just depth and a water discharge raster. The water depth will be in meters and the water discharge will be in cubic meters per second. In the parameters tab, we're going to leave most of the parameters the same. Um, you can optionally change the iterations and the time interval. The time interval should be enough time for water to flow across the study area. Um, the number of walkers, I'm going to set it to about 10,000 to start with. The higher the number of walkers, the longer the simulation will take, but um, the less error there will be. The maximum number of walkers, I believe, is 7 million for now. So this runs at a reasonable speed. I'm just going to leave it at 10,000. And when you're ready, you can run this. Simwi is computationally intensive, so this may take a while, may take several minutes. I'll go ahead and add the results here. So water depth and discharge. Let's add the legend for water depth first. So I'll run d.legend with um, the raster set to water depth. Now here we can see um, that the deepest areas in this um, oval lawn and especially along the, the pathways in the valley between the landforms, we're getting up to um, half a meter of water depth. The discharge, we'll change the legend here. Set it to the discharge map. And this is in cubic meters per second. So we can see the rate of discharge. Now, let's put this as a shaded relief map using r.shade. So under Modules, Terrain Analysis, Raster, Terrain Analysis, Apply Shade to Raster, r.shade. We can use the depth map over either the relief map or the sky view map to create a map such as and to 
create an overlay. We can call this something like shaded depth. And there's our, oh, I should do shaded discharge. There's our shaded discharge map. So this is an overlay of the discharge and the relief. Now, we used a constant Manning's factor. That's a constant surface roughness. Now, if we look at the orthophotograph in the permanent map set, we have a series of orthophotographs. If I pick the latest one, imagery 2018, I can see that there's quite variable surface roughness. I have very smooth um, hardscape pathways. I have grass and um, newly planted slopes um, that haven't, that are still bare or have some shrub cover. You can also see some bare ground on this newly constructed landscape. So we can use this land cover to create variable surface roughness and use that in the simulation. And that's going to significantly change our simulation of water flow. So the land cover map that's included in this data set is much older. from 2014, before construction was finished. You can see that while some of the landforms were built, there was still a construction road going through this last main landform. So this land cover map won't be very useful. Instead, we're going to derive our land cover and our Mannings from the 2018 imagery. If we look, We'll look in the permanent map set. I've done add multiple map layers. The map type is raster. I'm looking in the permanent map set and I'm going to search for imagery 2018 dot. Now you can see there's four channels that were imported here. Red, green, blue, near infrared. If I hit OK, you can see these four channels. So red, green, blue, and near-infrared. So if we want to create land cover from this, we're going to use the imagery tools. I'm going to go to imagery, develop imagery, and I'm going to create a new image group with IDOT group. Here, I would create a new imagery group, say call it 2018, and then um, you would want to create a subgroup and call that 28, imagery 2018 as well. This subgroup option may be removed from a future release of grass. It's overcomplicating things. Once you've created the imagery group, then hit add to add the maps imagery 2018, channel 1, 2, 3, and 4. We would go here, add, and then pick uh, the map set as permanent. Search pattern is imagery 2018 dot, and you'll be able to add these four here. Once you've created the imagery group, we'll be able to do um, image classification. We're going to go here to imagery and we're going to start with IDOT cluster. So that should be under classify image, clustering input for unsupervised classification, IDOT cluster. So 
The name of the input imagery group will be imagery. The name of the imagery subgroup will be imagery 2018 as, as well. And we're going to create a signature file. In the second tab, settings, we need to create a certain number of classes. And this is up to us. I'm going to create three classes. Essentially, I want to classify um, hardscape, bare ground, and green. And that's fine for the settings. I would go ahead and run that. And it's going to create um, a signature file. We'll go ahead and run that. Next, we'll run i.maxlig. This is maximum likelihood. So imagery, classify imagery, i.maxlig. This is for unsupervised image classification. And we're going to input the signature file we just created with i.cluster. So again, the imagery group will be imagery 2018. Imagery subgroup, the same. And then the signature file, just put in the same name. Um, as uh, we created in i.cluster. And then for the output, we can call this something like um, classification. That should be fine. Go ahead and run this. And our output will be a classified raster map. So our goal here was to classify the green, that's our purple here, hardscape in teal and bare grounds um, as the yellow. We have three classes, and they don't have a label yet. Um, we're going to recode this to be our Manning surface roughness. At the end of the tutorial, I have a list of suggested Manning surface roughness values um, based on national land cover data set classes. So what we're going to do is use grass. Um, which has a Manning surface roughness value of approximately 0.368. I think we're going to use barren land, 0.0113, and um, uh, developed open space for the hardscape, 0.0404. So our job now is to recode this. We'll use the command r.recode. We can find this under raster, change category values and labels, r.recode. Our raster map to be recoded will be classification. And our output map, we'll call this Mannings. You could also call it, for example, Roughness. And you can either make a text file with these values and save it as Mannings.txt and enter it here. Or in this case, I'm just going to paste the values here directly. That will 
give us. What we have here is the value one is getting recoded to our value from one to one will be recoded as 0 0.368. And then from two to two is 0 0.04 and so forth. You can go ahead and run that and that will compute the Manning's map. Let's see our Manning's map. Just update the legend, and here's our Manning's map. We did not add labels. If you wanted to, you could with r.category. Now we're ready to run r.sim.water again and use this spatially variable land cover. Back in modules, we'll open r.sim.water. Our input is going to be the same to start with, elevation for the input elevation map. dx is dx, and dy is dy. In the input tab, we'll use the same rainfall rate 150 millimeters per hour and we're this time we're going to add a Manning's in map rather than using this constant value we're going to set the Manning's map just type it in Manning's for our output we'll need to give this a different name say depth with land cover discharge with land cover. You can use a shorter name if that's too verbose. For parameters, I'll set the same number of walkers, 10,000, and you can use the same time interval if you like. Um, then you can go ahead and run this. Again, it may take a while and it may take longer. It may take more like five or ten minutes this time. Let's go ahead and add the results. I've already run this. So here is the shaded depth with land cover. If we compare this with the um, with the depth, let's see. If we compare this with um, compare the depth with land cover to the depth. This is depth with constant land cover depths with spatially variable land cover. What we can see is a lot more water is moving along the paths and starting to fill up um, the oval lawn and also this crescent lawn to the north. If we look at the discharge, we'll see the same sort of story. Let me change this legend to discharge. So here's discharge with land cover. And discharge with constant. Here's the discharge with constant land cover. Discharge with variable land cover. And see so we have higher discharge along the pathways, and that's bringing the water to collect in the lawn here, for example. Now, if we want to animate this and start to understand how the water is moving through time, we can do this with r.sim.water. So go back to r.sim.water and 
is we can keep the same parameters. Um, in my example, I have um, I've changed the to make more frames for an animation. I've made, used a longer time, thirty minutes, and made the default interval one minute. Um, what we need to do to make a time series is in the output tab, we're going to compute time series output. This is flag T. So I check time series output, and I'm ready to run this. Um, I'm going to shorten the names here. What it's going to do is it's going to create a time series of depth and discharges maps appended with a time step. So go ahead and run this, and let's see what it produces. The result should look like this series. I've hit add multiple maps, selected raster as the type, map set as hydrology, and I'm using a search pattern. So I put in discharge and then dot um, because we have a dot um, before the time step. And here's the time step, one minute, two minute, three minute, so forth. And let's add these. We're going from discharge at one minute to discharge at 30 minutes, and all the time steps in between. So this can start to show us how the discharge changes over time. If we want to animate this, we can do it with a grass animation tool. Let's give this a try now. We're going to go to, first of all, we're going to make a list of the animation of the, uh, we're going to make a list of the discharge maps. So go to file, manage map and list maps, g.list. With g.list, we're going to list raster maps. So under required, check raster, and then under second tab pattern, we're going to do a search pattern for discharge dot and then an asterisk for a wildcard character, meaning anything after this, and run this. Here we see our list of discharge maps. Now, we want to print this. Um, all in one line. So I'm going to change the field separator to comma. Run this again. This gives us a nice list of all the discharge maps that we can use in the animation tool. I'm going to copy this. And now we can start the animation tool, g.gui.animation. You can find it under File as well, Animation Tool. So we've opened up the grass animation tool and size the window as large as we want it to be. Oops. And to start with, I need to add a new animation here. So I'm going to hit add a new animation. And in the new animation dialog, I want to add a space-time raster data set here, or a series of maps. So the first button, and I have a choice of different data types. You can pick multiple raster maps or a space-time raster data set. What we have this time is a list of raster maps. If we wanted to make the space-time raster data set, we could um, have used the grasses temporal framework and used 
t.create to create a new space-time raster data set, and then t.register to register this list of nodes. This time we'll skip that step and we're just going to paste in the list of maps from g.list. Hit OK. So here's our list of 30 discharge maps. And we can go ahead and hit OK. It's going to render the map layers. And we can preview the animation. If I hit play right here, animation is going to play through. And I can see how the water flow starts to evolve over time. Now, this looks a little flat, so let's add some shaded relief to it. I'm going to hit add or edit animation here, and I'm going to edit the animation. Second button. Select the animation, and I'm going to add a regular raster map layer. I'm going to add either the sky view or the relief. Now, I might layer it on top and then change the opacity. I'm going to change the opacity and put this down to maybe 20. Hit OK. Another way you could do this would be to run um, r.shade for each of the discharge maps. But that would be a better job for Python. I'm just going to do this more simply by putting either the sky view or the relief on top of the time series and set the opacity low around 20%. Hit OK, and it's going to re-render. Um, if it doesn't re-render right away, you can hit the re-render button right here. Then we can play the animation. We have nice shading beneath this and a good visualization of water flow. If you want to change the speed, you can do it here with change animation speed. And maybe to make this a little longer, I'll make each frame last 250 milliseconds instead of 200. Then the animation will play a little more slowly. Too slow and the frame rate will seem choppy it would be better to add more frames to the animation. When you're happy with the result, you can go ahead and export the animation. You may want to add a legend. I'm going to export the animation in this case as an animated GIF, because an animated GIF can play easily in a web browser and most picture viewers. So under the export choices, we have AWI, SWF, image sequence and animated GIF. I'm going to pick animated GIF. I'm going to browse and save this as something like discharge.gif. And make sure you put the file extension on the file name. Go ahead and export that, and you'll have a nice animated GIF that you can easily post on the web, for example. And that concludes this tutorial on hydrologic modeling in GRASGIS. Thank you.